by four club challenge is brought to you by bridgestone welcome to round six of the 2014 bridgestone 4x4 club challenge this round is hosted by the mccarthy 4x4 club that is based at the rhino park 4x4 complex east of pretoria a mix of sand, traditional Tour de Palki obstacles, as well as some navigational challenges form the backbone of this event, which promises to be a tough one. As always, the field represented a motley crew of different 4x4 vehicles and experienced and less experienced off-roaders. This included a few of the usual suspects in their Jeeps and Suzukis, as well as some classic legends Another entry to keep tabs on was the Toyota Hilux of Michelle DeLanger and Susan Saunderson, an all-girl team in pink, driving in their very first 4x4 competition. And Dumelo Maketekete, another 4x4 competition newbie, is driving a Toyota Fortuna. However, Mr. T has a secret weapon. Sitting in the co-driver's seat is Saki Kutsia, one of the country's most experienced 4x4 drivers. And so, after the driver's briefing and some tire deflation action, the scrutineering got underway. Here, all the 4x4s are checked for legality and safety. And finally, it was time to go 4x4ing. Just, nice just coking you got there, eh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Car number one on this event is defending Bridgestone Club Challenge champion Danny Daniels in his Grand Cherokee. But he seems to be a bit confused there. What's up, Danny? I'm already lost, but you know, this thing doesn't say where to go. So. <laughs> but from now on, we're going to make it. We'll have to see about that. After traversing a few small obstacles along the way, Danny and co-driver Tiernus Kortenhoven finally arrive at obstacle one and the first Tour de Palki challenge of the day. Here, a steep rutted climb is followed by a narrow gate, a descent, and then a tight turn through those narrow gates. Let's see how Danny rolls. Easy does it, as Danny and the Grand get up the slippery climb easily enough, but then, Oh dear. After lining up more appropriately, Danny and the Jeep get through the gate. But unfortunately, the Grand Cherokee collects one of those poles in the next part of the obstacle. With all the stops and reverses and poles, the defending champion bags just 60 points. Looks like it'll be a tough day for the 4x4 teams. Some say this little Suzuki can drive sideways through the narrow gates and still not touch anything. Either way, the tiny SJ413 of Darny Tate and Vilma Ferry should theoretically do pretty well here. Darny heads up, and the SJ makes it look surprisingly easy. He makes the gate, and now just for that steep descent between all those poles. <laughs> and by Jove, he makes it through with no penalties. <laughs> Excellent! <laughs> that was quite tight. <laughs> that, that uphill is very technical, throws you off. And the downhill start getting out of this gate at the bottom here. But excellent, excellent. Obstacle 2 is a long-winded and tricky affair, as Danny Daniels and his Jeep demonstrate here. The teams must first navigate their way through some slippery mud. Once this is completed, they have to touch a pole without that pole touching a second pole, waiting in ambush. Next, the teams have to reverse through that mud and negotiate a steep climb where another one of those Nudge Me Gently Baby challenges awaits. Once they've completed this, they're still not done. There's a last set of gates on a tricky slope with a turn worked in for good measure. Great Scott! Even though Danny and Tierna scored a rather splendid 85 points, the lesser experienced teams may have a tough time here. 
Enter Jaco Prolius and George Kirsten in a Toyota Hilux 4-litre V6. Jaco starts off in brilliant form, easily dispatching the slippery mud with the most appropriate amount of momentum. Oh dear, he stops just millimetres short of that pole. Now for the mud in reverse. And this is where I'll just keep quiet as the drama unfolds. <laughs> Finally, Yako and the Toyota are out of the mud trap. And now for that reverse manoeuvre business. Crikey, mate, you're supposed to nudge the pole, not kill it. <laughs> Let's see if Yaku can get any points on that last climb. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, no. Two more traumatised poles means the V6 Hilux leaves this obstacle with zero points. This is obstacle three, and here Juan and Jason Holgrain first have to scale a slippery slope and then turn. Hey, what's that now? Isn't that? Yes, it's Airwolf calling. Juan cuts Jean-Michael Vincent short, while the Toyota is balanced quite precariously at the top of the heap of sand. Now the Hilux has to weave its way through some exceedingly narrow gates, down the slope and through some axle twisters. The question here isn't if you're going to hit a pole, it's rather how to hit as few poles as possible. Toyota is through, and with a slightly more palatable 40 points in the bank. Welcome back. Henry Barnes and Bert van Emerva line up next in a Suzuki Jimny. With no differential lockers at his disposal, Henry flies up the first climb. Now just for those narrow gates and those nasty axle twisters. Henry, who seems to have enjoyed one cup of tea too many, with one finger suspended, deftly wheels the steering wheel left Right, left, and he's through with a hundred points. Heinz and Blanche Kussel in a beautiful old Range Rover V8 are next in the queue. The Range Rover is 4x4 old school. So solid axles front and rear and no fancy computers that decide where to apply what power. Instead, it's all about mechanical grip and driver skill. Let's ride with the Kussel. Oh, touch that one. One. Okay, come to the left. We find you. Lots of space here, lots of space here, lots of space here. Okay. Okay, go to the right a little bit. You're going to touch this one. To the right, to the right. You're close to it. You're close to it. You're close to it. Okay, go. You go. Oh. The big old go Rangey right. does a splendid job with all that wheel right. articulation. But after taking out two poles on the way down, the crew banks only 50 points here. This is Gerard and Nicolene Siebert in a Mitsubishi Pajero. The Sieberts are on a quest to find obstacle four. And to get there, they have to dispatch a number of other obstacles too, while using their route schedule. And finally, they make it to obstacle four. This obstacle consists of a short but slippery climb, followed by a long side slope business, with those poles placed in rather uncomfortable places. Right, let's ride with Gerard and the Pajero. He gets up the climb easily enough, and the downhill too. Now just for that side slope.
Annie does a splendid job, bagging a hundred points on one of the easy obstacles of the day. Good. <laughs> And we finally caught up with our girl power team. It's Michelle DeLanger and Susan Saunderson, and they're in a Toyota Hilux D4D. And remember, they've never ever driven in a 4x4 competition before. After sussing out the obstacle and charming the marshal some, the ladies tackle the obstacle. They handle that first climb quite fabulously. Right, so since obstacle four seems like a pretty easy one, let's go in search of something a bit more challenging. This is another guest team, and it's the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon of Werner and Arno Skarp. The Skarps are on their way to obstacle five, but there's a little issue. They have no idea where to go. So they stop and ask for directions from the ladies in pink, which isn't quite according to the man code because men aren't supposed to ask for directions. Anyway, seems like they're in the right place, and it's the Sand Gymkhana. Here, the teams have to complete a Gymkhana test on Rhino Park's deceptively soft sand, and they have to do it against the clock. Hit a pole, and that's 25 points lost. Miss a gate, and that's also 25 points lost. So the teams have to be smooth, fast, and accurate. And as we've come to expect from the Scarps, they have a bit of a plan going. The team gets cracking, wheel spinning, and V6 roaring. When they get to the tight turns, Arno works in the handbrake from the passenger seat. seems to have done the trick as the Jeep sets the fastest time of the day. Werner is just a little bit impressed by this. Wow, wow! <laughs> One, two, three. This is Sean Niemant and Dominique Chaluka, and they're in a Jeep Wrangler TJ Sport. Sean's four-litre Jeep is a regular front runner, so let's see how they go here. The Jeep, with that straight-six engine singing a beautiful tune, easily deals with the sand. A very tight turn and the wrong line forces Sean to stop and reverse. That will have cost some time. But finally the TJ is through and it's recorded the second fastest time of the day, less than two seconds slower than the Scarpian Jeep. If it wasn't for the stop... This is Rick Skoltz and Lali van Lochrenberg in a legendary Toyota Hilux 2.7i. As you'll notice, Lali is employing a hand throttle method on Rick's leg. A light tap for increased speed or a squeeze for brakes. Yep, it's as simple as that, folks. Let's see if it works. The Toyota starts off in great style, but at the big turn, it almost, almost gets stuck. The second part also doesn't go so well. Rick manages to flatten two poles very flat. Thank you. 
The Hilux finally makes it through, but with all the dead poles and a slow time, they record zero points. We ride with Rick and Lali and the Hilux to obstacle six. But before we get there, some more directional drama. This time, it's Suzuki Jimny man Ivan Lerm that's so lost, he's not even sure if he's still on the Rhino Park premises. Rick and Lali sort him out, though, and send him in the right direction, hopefully. Part of the challenge here is that the teams not only have to negotiate 4x4 challenges, they also have to navigate themselves between the obstacles. Right, so here's obstacle 6. It's a relatively easy climb, straight up a steep and slippery incline after starting at the first gates, topped off with a tight and narrow turn. JJ Liebenberg and Albert Norki are in the McCarthy 4x4 Club's Toyota Hilux D4D. In the passenger seat, Albert has some advice for JJ. <laughs> Maybe JJ should have hoid some more there. He tries to get going again, but at that angle, on that slippery slope, the Hilux isn't having any of it. <laughs> Do you have points left or not? No, no points. Only one at left. This is Rian Bakker and Jan van Grieve in another Toyota Fortuna. Rian makes it up, no worries, but he's touched two poles in the process, so that's 50 points scored. Television presenter and 4x4 hobbyist Dumelo Maketekete and 4x4 expert Saki Kutsia line up their Toyota Fortuna. Mr. T boots it up the incline and makes it up, but he's also touched that pole on the left side, so that's another 75 pointer. This is Obstacle 7 at the McCarthy 4x4 Club event, and it's also the last one for this event. Our first customers here are Peter Kriel and Jaco Rousseau, and they're in a Toyota Fortuna. As Peter and Jaco will now demonstrate, the last obstacle is also one of those where you have to try and work out how to lose the least amount of points, because points will be lost. They slowly make their way down the first drop a slippery and steep affair with a tight turn at the bottom. And they record their first pole offence soon enough. And a second one. And the third one. So the Fortuna lads only score 20 points here. Craggy, it's looking like another difficult one. And here's another Fortuna. And this V6 is piloted by Mark Bosch and Elisna Heineke, who seem to be working on a cunning plan. And there they go. Slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> In the passenger seat, Elisna closes her eyes as they tackle that last climb. Oh, crikey, she's too slow, that one. Tries again and out she goes. 
<laughs> Don Lowe and Gregory Harris are in a long Toyota Hilux. Their chances of getting through here with no penalties are slightly remote. It doesn't start well. And blimey, the passenger headrest speaks. No. Oh. Oh. Dan decides to take out a pole to improve his line for the steep climb. And he's through, with 50 points in the bank. Our last customers for the day are Lichtenbergians Wimpy Olufir and Jakob van Seil, who have taken the Datsun out of the shed for this competition. Unfortunately for the Lichtenbergians, they had inadvertently touched a pole while inspecting the obstacle, so that was already 25 points lost. Right, so let's see how they go. The Datsun gets down the decline OK and takes out the one pole as planned. But the turn is too tight and Vimpy has to reverse to get a better line. And up he goes, and that's 40 points in the bank. And that's that for the action. Before we get to the top teams, first an overview of the prizes that are up for grabs. Besides the spot in the final, some handy prizes are up for grabs here too. Third place wins a mean green recovery kit, courtesy of Opposite Lock. And second place bags a set of HID Opposite Lock driving lights. The winner of the event gets a 10,000 Rand tyre voucher from main sponsor Bridgestone. The overall prizes will be decided at the final in November. A 20,000 Rand gift voucher from Opposite Lock will go to second place overall. But the big carrot is the main prize, a Conqueror camping trailer worth 50,000 Rand. Firstly winning the 2,000 Rand Environmental Award was Sean Niemant and Dominique Chaluka in the Jeep Wrangler. Right, and in third place on this low-scoring event were Henry Barnes and Bert van Amerver in the Suzuki Jimny. Second place was a turn-up for the books, with the old Range Rover V8 beating a host of more modern hardware with all kinds of tricks. Well done to Heinz and Blanche Kussel. But winning the event with a very impressive overall performance was Sean Niemant and Dominique Chaluka in the TJ. Next week, we travel to Lichtenberg in the Northwest Province. Till then. The 4x4 Club Challenge was brought to you by Bridgestone.